Hi, Freedom Warriors, to Essential Talks podcast, uh, where you stay for the conversation and you leave empowered. This is episode six. I'm your host, Jamie Russo, and uh, my two lovely hosts, Jessica and Kimberly. Today, our guest <laughs> is Jody Ledgerwood, um, and you might recognize her from her viral videos uh, where she was in the downtown Toronto Eaton Centre and they strutted their rights uh, with security and then with a couple of police officers. So before we jump into this, we're going to play a little clip and uh, yeah, so enjoy. We've got to make sure there's okay, a lot of people see. watching this. Let's see if my let's volume see. is back. We'll see what happened here. Um, sure. Sure, guys. The police are now here, so let's just yep, see. Yep. My volume is back, hopefully. Yeah, we've been live stream. That's awesome. How long do you guys need on the trespass property? We're not trespassing. We bought the food here, we're eating the food here. How's that trespass? private property? It's not private, it's public property. Why do they want us to leave? Yes, that means you have access to it with permission. Come up to private property. I bought the food and I'm going to eat here. You're breaking the law. Here's the thing. Okay, Dorman's going to show you the law. I'm going to show you the law. You want to see We're going to show you the law. We've got the law right here. You want to see the law? Hey, let me ask you something. Why are they asking us to leave? Yeah, why? Why? That's the question. They promote segregation. Let them speak. Let them speak. Why? There's a new procedure. Procedure is not a law. Let them hear them out. Hear them out. Hear them out. It says you have to have your vaccination passport to be seated to eat on private property. Okay. Right? That's why. Do you understand that you have absolutely no right? Do you want to quote this here? Go ahead. Yep, so have... under the law, you cannot call it. It's right here. We um, have it all right here. Right here. I've got all the Which laws right here. Law? Yeah. Law? So we've got one, the Immunization Act of 1997 that says that in Canada, you cannot mandate vaccinations anywhere in Canada. Does that supersede the Trespass Property Act? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's a federal law. It 100% does. It's a law. It's not an act. It, it's, a, it's a law that all laws must adhere to this and you cannot mandate Are vaccinations. Are them access? Based on what though? Based on, hold on. Hold yeah, on. he's doing it. Not, he's doing it. it. Okay. Are you banning them based on a rule that the law has for access? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. answering for him? You're answering for him? You're answering for him? Don't put the right. words in his mouth. So the Trespasser Property Act dictates that... Okay, let, let me show... That, hold on, hold on, we hold on. Have, Okay, we have that here as well. The Trespasser Property Act dictates that him has the right to tell you to leave. Okay. And if you don't leave, mm -hmm. okay. can I show you the Trespass you the Property Act? From the property. Can I show you the Trespass to Property Act? We have a reader. I will. Give, part give me one second. The Trespass to Property Act, Section Number 2, states as long as you're in there taking part in the business that they advertise, you are not trespassing. It does. Yes, I it have does. it right here. 100% it does. It's right here. We are not in here causing a nuisance. We came in, we bought food. Right, We're sitting sure. at a table sure. eating our food. We're not causing a nuisance. We're not being belligerent. We're not stealing. We're not doing anything against the law besides sitting down eating the food that we purchased that they sold to us. So we are 100% within the law. Trespass Act, section number two. We are not causing a nuisance. We are doing what everybody else. I'm trying to find it. You know where it is. You put this together. No, it's in here somewhere. I think so you may have passed it. What we're trying to do right now is educate the officers as to what the laws are because they're questioning whether their take on the laws is I think you passed it. What the laws oh, so what's that one? That? What, what's okay, the that's the reopening act, so it's after this. Eight, nine. Coming up here, guys. 8932. Eight, right here, trust back to a property yeah. act. Yeah. So, right here, section number two. We are not trespassing because we are taking part in an activity that is allowed. They You're advertise under right of authority and the right of authority. His authority. No, 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 He doesn't have the authority to man. He doesn't have the man. No, no, no. Listen. He doesn't have the authority to mandate every person, vaccination. Every person who is acting under a right. So I have a right not, not to show him. referring to you. They're referring to him. No, 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 no. They're referring to us. Every person. I'm a person who is not acting under a right or authority will be trespassing. I am acting under a right. He has no right to take, to ask me for my vaccine history. It's against the it's law. It's against There's the law. Three day, three day. Yeah. Without yeah. the express permission of the employer, the, 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 the proof of which of, rests on the defendant. He has the express Age permission in an activity the on the premises when the activity is prohibited. Yes, the activity which, you're doing is prohibited. No, it's, it's not. not. It's not. It's eating activity, food that I'm we doing. bought here, rules. eating food, they don't, food, get to make rules. They don't they don't get to policy outside of the law. On top of that, 
And on top of that, we've got the Ontario Health and Privacy Act that says he has no oh, right to ask, to ask us what our personal medical history is. That is a law. Under the Immunization Act of Canada, he has no right to ask us to be vaccinated in order to come here. Under the law, we have the right to come and purchase the food that they've advertised for us to purchase and eat Please it here. Follow their rules. And you They'll cannot, not and they you cannot policy, policy outside the law. Outside the law. Outside that is law. very, very clear. The government knows right now that they can't force, ma force vaccinate us all. Yeah. So and that's why they're not doing it. Thinking that they can do it. They're telling you to have a vaccine policy. Uh -huh. and they're tricking them into do it. Exactly. It's discrimination under the Human Rights Code. And they have no right to do it. Under the Privacy Act, they have no right to ask for our medical Personal history. Personal Health Information Protection Act. Sure, guys, sure, 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 I've got sure, all sure. the laws right here that they are breaking. In fact, you should be charging them for breaking the law. Harassment and uttering threats. Well, I'm clear. Under the Criminal Code, they have that. United States in the history. How do you feel about segregation of Jews in Germany? How do you feel about that segregation? Officer Langford, how do you feel about segregation policy? Brother, how do you feel about segregation policy? No, I'm clear. Well, you're here. No, but you're, you're here and you're... Yeah. No, but I'm asking your opinion. And I'm telling you, I'm not here to debate. It's not a debate, it's a question. You can ask it. No, I'm clear, but I'm just curious. How do you feel about segregation It's my job. It's my job. If they have a policy, say... Your job is to uphold the law. If they have a policy, say... Here, are you going to enforce There's a list that policy? Of laws that they are breaking. They are yeah. breaking these laws. But he said he's going to. You know that. You're a police officer. You know that. No, we're not. We're not breaking the law. It's not a law. It's not a trespass. It is not a trespass when you're here. Exactly. When you are here taking part in the activity that they specifically advertise, that is not trespassing. We came in, we, so we bought food, and we sat down. How do you feel about harassing second-class citizens? How do you feel about harassing second-class citizens? Officer Chan, how do you feel about harassing second-class citizens? So we have Officer Chan and Officer Langford here. You just saw your history, Officer Langford. I wonder if they go to Queen's Park on Saturday. And by the way, everyone who's been quiet here is due compliance with this. I have no problem asking for identification for a human rights complaint and for criminal code charges to be pressed on every security person here. That wow, that was crazy. So that's that's an amazing clip. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I first saw that clip, I was like just over the moon about it. I couldn't believe uh, the way that you guys strutted your rights. You knew everything, what to say. Uh, it's like you've been planning that for a while, Jody. Um, tell, us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about how you put that package together, or where it came from, how you wound up in the Eaton Center, and kind of just what happened. Sure. So I started putting the package together back in January. Um, I had attended a Freedom Rally out in Vancouver with Vlad of We Are All Essential, and I streamed live streamed it on Facebook. And when I got back the following day, um, people in my own home community in Ontario had taken the video and it went viral. And needless to say, cancel culture struck. Um, there was a smear campaign against me. My real estate board was calling for my resignation because I was now speaking out against the narrative very, very publicly. And the media had gotten hold of it and they put it public everywhere. So I ended up being in the midst of a legal battle, um, trying to save my real estate registration. Uh, so I figured it was time that I brushed up on the law. So I've been researching the law since January. I've been, every time I come across an article that, is, that I think is important or would be useful in a court of law, or anytime I've come across uh, an, an act or a statute, I would save it to my computer for future use. Lo and behold, uh, future use came to fruition back in, I guess it was August, July, August, it came to fruition. Uh, I was sitting around with a bunch of my friends from the and we were talking about how all of our rights are being violated and how so many of us don't understand that we actually do have rights and that the law does protect us. Um, and we were like, oh, somebody should hold an information session to teach people. And I said, well, I got all the laws sitting on my computer. <laughs> and my girlfriend said, really? And I said, yeah, 
she goes, well, I think Chris Weisdorf is running an information session. Maybe we can try and get into his and see what he's doing and maybe see if what you've got corresponds with what he's got. And maybe we can run a workshop here in conjunction with Chris Weisdorf. So I'm like, oh, that'd be awesome. So my girlfriend, Jeanette Miller, got into his course um, up in Richmond Hill. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get in. They were they were full to capacity, so I missed out. Um, but I did contact this assistant, Cindy Harris, to see if we could run in conjunction with him a workshop down here. Um, she contacted us. She said it was $97 per person to have the workshop. But yes, they would be more than willing to, in conjunction with us, do this. I know a lot of people have not worked for 18 months, a year, what have you. Um, and those are the people that need these rights. They need to know the law and they need to be educated on it. Um, so in good conscience, I, I could not charge anybody $97 to come to a workshop. Um, and that, that doesn't take away from what Chris is doing at all because it's his time and his time is expensive. Once you don't get time back, right? It's the one thing that you can't put a dollar value on. Um, so I just said to Cindy, you know what? We're gonna run it and we're gonna run it for free. Um, I've got everything. There was only one thing I was missing in my package that Chris had in his, which was the Quarantine Act. So thank you, Chris. Um, he let us put what he had uh, of the Quarantine Act in my package. Uh, so anyway, in a matter of four days, we were able to put together this legal package and we put on a Know Your Rights information session down at Lakeview Park in Oshawa. Uh, we printed off, my package is 50 pages long. So it's, it's a pretty intensive package. And it doesn't just have laws in it, it's got how to deal with your employer, how to deal with bylaw and police when they approach you, uh, different signs that you should have up in, in your stores. Uh, it's got links to mask websites, links to uh, lockdown websites. It's got a lot of different things in there that basically affect every part of our life that has been touched by the pandemic lockdowns. Um, so it is a very intensive package. But in four days, we put this together, we printed off 75 packages thinking we're probably only gonna get like 50 people come because we really haven't given anybody any notice and it's at the park and who wants to come and listen to us talk about law. We had over 300 people show up. So needless to say, we didn't have enough packages for people. Um, so I ended up handing out my business card and saying, just contact me, I'll email you the package. Um, so that worked for about a week, but it, the package is so big, it was taking a half hour or better to send out one email because the package is so big. And then some emails were bouncing back because the servers on the other end weren't able to handle the package. And uh, one of the PPC candidates in the area, Daryl Mackey approached me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing this again in conjunction with the PPC? And I said, sure, obviously there's a need and a want for it. So we held another information session. And again, we had well over 200 people attend. And again, ran out of packages, had to give out my cards. And then people heard about me doing this and started inviting me to private engagements at, at houses, at um, outbuildings, what have you. So several of the engagements I went to had over 400 people. And so I went and I talked about the package and, and question and answer series. And then we get to, the Eaton Center video. Uh, Vlad was in Toronto and he was doing a rally. Uh, he does these, go down to your local city halls on Wednesdays at one o'clock and protest outside them. So he had asked me to come down and speak about my package. So I put together four packages to take down with me, one to give to Vlad to take back with him and whoever else might've been close by, I could just give them a package and that was that. But when we went down, uh, Dermot Pomeroy and Jim Kerr and I went down, it was raining and the protest was outside, but we all know we have a hard enough time getting people to a protest during the workday as it is, add the rain on top of that and the showing wasn't very good. I think we were outside for about 45 minutes and then we said, you know what, forget it. We all know our rights, um, so there's no point in doing this and nobody else is here. Let's go for lunch and figure out how we can make these Wednesdays bigger and better and ha sort of strategize on other initiatives we could do to try and get the word out there. So we decided to go to the Eaton Center, not even thinking that September 22nd was the day that the 
double vaccine mandates came into play. So we walk into the Eaton Center and we are confronted with all these, you can't eat in our food court unless you're double vaccinated. They had all the tables and chairs completely roped off. They had security at three different entrances in and you had to show a vaccination passport and fill out a contact tracing to sit down and eat. You could go to the vendors and buy food, but you weren't allowed to eat it there unless you could show proof of vaccination. So the six of us that went, all being freedom fighters, we said, okay, let's see how this is gonna go. Let's pull out our phones and, and let's just hope for the best. And well, <laughs> hoping for the best, we never ever could have imagined that what was gonna happen next was going to happen. Um, the videos went viral. We did get around the security guards. We found a table. We added chairs to the table so that all six of us could eat together. We were surrounded by security and then and all of the security trying to get us to leave, wanting to know our vaccination status. And we just said, no, we do not consent. We do not consent. It is against the law for you to even ask us. We're just going to sit down and eat the food that we purchased here. We do not consent. We sat down. We were... Um, surrounded by, I think it was five or six security guards. And then they called the police in. So the police came down. There was now two police officers, five or six security guards around us, all wanting us to leave because we would not disclose what our vaccination status was. Um, anyway, the police tried to school us and tell us we were trespassing and wanted to arrest us and ticket us and all that wonderful stuff. But because I had the legal package on us, we pulled it out and we started to school the police officers and the security guards on what the laws are. And they tried to fight us on it, but then we just went, oh, nope, here it is. And we pulled it out and we said, see, read here. This is what it means. This is what it is. And they, and then they tried to say, no, that's, that's not what trespassing means. And we're like, yes, it is. Cause here it is right in front of you. And then they tried to say, well, no, you, you have to show us your vaccine passport. And then we were like, no, no, Ontario Health Consent Act says this. And we pulled that out and went through that with them. And then we, they said something else and we pulled out the Canadian Bill of Rights and read that to them. So they really didn't know what to do with us after that because we had the laws, we were showing them the laws, we were reading them the laws, and then we were educating them or interpreting what that law actually meant that the poor policeman was like, I don't know what to do. So he's like, okay, you know what? We're just gonna call my supervisor because I don't know what to do with you guys because you guys mm -hmm. obviously know your rights. And he obviously understood legalese and understands how to read the law. And so he went off uh, a little bit away from us with the security guards. The management of the mall came down and he was with the security guards and they really just didn't know what to do with us because we knew the law and there was no way that they could get out of it. So we finished eating our lunch, we cleaned up the table, we put the chairs back where we got them from, and we left the Eaton Center. We stood outside the Eaton Center for 15 to 30 minutes just chatting. <laughs> that was crazy. And then the police came out. They didn't even look at us. They wouldn't speak to us. Uh, Dermot even tried to engage them, and they just walked right past us, got in their cars, and drove away. And that video, well, five of us had our cell phones out, so those videos, I should say, went absolutely viral everywhere. My Instagram has, as of two days ago, over 294,000 views. Never in a million years did I ever, ever think that that would happen. And I was kind of ridiculous because I put out my cell phone saying, hey, if you want the package, um, just reach out to me. Dermot put out his email um, and a couple other people put out their information. And, uh, you know, I only had maybe a few hundred followers on Instagram, so I really didn't think it was a big deal to give out my phone number. And that was the biggest mistake I think I ever made. <laughs> I had um, probably well over 15,000. It might even be 20,000 text mess messages right now. My phone doesn't stop ringing, even now. And here we are, what, I think two weeks after the fact, because that was September 22nd. So two weeks later, my phone is still blowing up. Um, people have now Googled my name and their, my emails. I still haven't gone through all my emails. I had well over 5,000 emails last, last week. I'm still sitting at 2,300. Um, my messenger, my proton mail, my, um, signal, telegram, Insta I haven't even looked at my Instagram at all because I just, I just can't. 
and all these people. I, I, I sent you a note two weeks ago. Why haven't you responded? So now I'm to the point where I can now answer my phone. I finally got my text messages down to zero. They stay at zero for about five seconds before all of a sudden the requests start coming back in again. But it, it's now at a rate that I can kind of keep on top of it. Um, but in the midst of all of this, it made me realize, yes, people really don't know their rights. They have no idea that they have rights. We have somewhere along the line forgotten that we have laws that protect us. We have a thing called the Constitution. We have a thing called the Canadian Bill of Rights. There is an international law called the Nuremberg Code that protects us from being experimented on. People have forgotten these things. And I'll tell you, earlier I was sitting in on a, on a Hydro One meeting, a town hall, I kind of snuck in there, um, and I'm listening to what the union lawyer is telling these city employees um, that basically they have no rights, the law doesn't cover them because they're public servants, and that the human rights code doesn't apply to them, and that the genetic non-discrimination -dis code act doesn't apply to them because really they're not taking their DNA, although I don't know what you call spit and, and snot saliva. I don't know what you call that if it's not D your DNA. <laughs> or your um, but it was, it, I was so appalled at what this lawyer was telling these people, flat out lies. And I thought if they don't have my package, they're going to get the vaccination because they're afraid they're going to lose their jobs in a couple of weeks. And they have no idea. The gentleman was even saying to them that this was not coercion. So they had no rights under the criminal code to even press charges on the individuals that were violating them because it's not coercion. I'm going, well, I don't know what you think the definition of coercion is, but when you apply consequences, do this or else, that's coercion. That's also extortion. That is uttering threats. All of that is criminal code activity. And he's telling them that it's not. You have your choice, but if you don't do it, we're gonna put you on unpaid leave. And still after six weeks, if you still haven't done it, then you're gonna lose your job. I'm going, that is the very definition of coercion. But he's telling these people that it's not. And that they're within their right to make these rules and that they're allowed to make these rules because the government said they're allowed to make these rules. And I thought, obviously, you have forgotten what the Canadian Bill of Rights says right in Section 1. I think it's Section 1B. You cannot policy or mandate outside of the law. You cannot policy and mandate outside of 1A of the Canadian Bill of Rights, which says that we are protected against discrimination and we have the right to life, liberty, and security of person and property. He has obviously forgotten that and you cannot make a rule, a policy, a mandate outside of that. And that's the whole reason why the government has not legislated and made it an act or a law that you have to be double vaccinated in order to participate in society because it's against all these other acts that protect us. And not only that, the vaccine that they are um, mandating is still in experimental phases. And under the Nuremberg Code, you cannot mandate or legislate anybody participate in an experimental um, medical procedure, period. And Section 3 of the Nuremberg Code specifically states that nothing is supposed to go into any human being until it's been tested on animals. And these were never, ever tested on animals. Therefore, they are 100% illegal. Even if you give consent, they are still illegal. And you can't even give properly informed consent because they have yet to release the full ingredient list of these vaccines, which again is part of Section 1 of the Nuremberg Code. So laws are being violated every which way but Sunday, um, and people just don't get it. So as much as my life has been disrupted, it's been disrupted for a really good cause. Um, so many people are cr crying when they call. They're desperate. They don't know what to do. And this video that went viral has given them hope. They really thought their lives were over. They thought their poor children 
we're going to have to be forced vaccinated in order to go to school, in order to play sports, uh, in order to go into a restaurant with their mom and dads. And now they realize they don't have to participate in an experiment anymore. There are laws that protect them. It, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy either. They're going to have to fight, unfortunately, for their rights. Um, but at least they now have the rights in their hands and they know what they're entitled to. So it disrupted my life in a giant way, but it, it, it's for the betterment of mankind, I think. Well, I believe so. So, um, yeah, the, one of the things I've been talking to a lot of people about is, is as you're saying, the so many laws are being broken. And I let them know that there, there's a vaccine policy, but it's the way the government wrote it, it seems like there's a vaccine like policy that you have to be double vaccinated, but there's a, a, a mandatory policy about a vaccine. So you literally, your policy at any workplace could be, we don't ask what your status is about the vaccine. Now that would be your mandatory policy about the vaccine, but the government has been weasels this way where they've written it in such a way that it's confusing to make people believe that that's what it is. If the government could have mandated this, they would have done it everywhere. They wouldn't have picked on selected um, individuals. And now if we look at it, who's been closed the longest? Uh, the gyms and the restaurants. Who Whose businesses are the most desperate? So of course you're gonna hit the most desperate to try and enforce it for you. This way it becomes um, you know, publicly known that this is acceptable all of a sudden. So, but I want to go back to kind of when you were at the Eaton Center, because I've experienced it as well, where you're standing with the so-called authorities and they're breathing down your neck and trying to intimidate you. And then when you know what your rights are, um, just, just kind of give us how your feeling was there. Cause I know I was, you know, nervous and, and you, you really, you're trying not to slip up on what you know, and then just the presentation. And when you do it a few times, it gets more comfortable, if that's even a thing, but it, it does and it becomes smoother. So um, you guys were very smooth, so we could see that you did it a couple of times, but just give us a bit of that experience so that this way, if anybody's you know, um, going to go out there and use that package, uh, a little bit of encouragement of how to keep your cool. To be perfectly honest, I've only done it two or three times in the last eight months where I've had to assert my rights. Um, but when, you, when you're with a group of people that understand that they have rights as well, it makes it a lot easier. So I, I've been saying to people, don't go out by yourself and try and do this. Um, I was assaulted last week by security guards. I was by myself at City Hall. Um, going in to do an in-person screening for three tickets I got for a vaccine vigil uh, protest that I did. Um, and the security guards didn't understand the law and they were they assaulted me because I didn't have a mask on, which is part of the law as well. And I was showing them that and they still didn't get it. And then they tried to say trespassing. So going by yourself is is dangerous and i hate to say that but unless you know where you're going and you know that they're friendly um i say don't go anywhere by yourself and always have your phone fully charged ready to videotape because if you have to take legal action against anybody who has violated your rights it, it's going to come down to he said she said so if you've got a recording of what happened you are protecting yourself and don't look at it as infringing on somebody else's rights because you're not. You're allowed to have your phone out in public and, and videotape and take pictures. You're allowed to do that. And if somebody is violating, you most certainly are allowed to protect yourself in that way. That's the whole reason why police officers wear body cams now to protect themselves. And as, as people who are trying to protect their bodies, you now have to have body cams or pull out your camera when you think you're in a dangerous situation. And we knew by the signs that were erected, which again, under the criminal code, that is also considered uh, uh, threats. Having signage that says, do this or else, that's a threat. So just having that signage, um, you could be charged under the criminal code. So I, I say to everybody, educate, 
then take legal action if things don't change. Um, but yeah, going in, I was very nervous. Um, when I saw the signs and when I saw the security guards there, I, I was definitely, my heart was, you know, racing a little bit. I'm sure my hand was probably shaking. Um, but I knew I was doing nothing wrong. I knew I was right. And I knew I had it in writing and I knew I was in a group of people. They, you know, bullies tend not to pick on people that are in groups. They pick on lone wolves. So if you want to go to a restaurant, make sure you're in a group of four to six or, or more, I guess. Um, if you want to go shopping, don't go shopping alone unless you know the place you're going to is friendly and, and doesn't discriminate. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going on. People are discriminating out of fear. And when people are fearful, their flight or fright um, uh, mechanisms kick in. And in most cases, they're going to attack you. Um, and that's been my experience. So I say educate first, go not alone and go definitely with the package in hand. And it doesn't have to be my package. Um, Stand for Thee has an amazing package. Um, my package is on We Are All Essential. Uh, Chris Weisdorf has an excellent package. There's a few of us that have put together packages to help people. Um, my package just seems to be really popular right now because people saw me implement my package and they saw that it worked. We didn't get ticketed. We didn't get trespassed. We didn't get arrested. We weren't hauled off in, in handcuffs. So people saw that and it gave them hope. And right now we all need a lot of hope and we all need to be empowered to stand in our square and be able to say, I do not consent with conviction and heart. And that's what that Eaton Center video did for people. And that's what these packages are now doing for people. Jody, just a quick uh, two-part question for you. Did the police supervisor ever come and talk to you guys? And what is the main question people are texting you and sending you? Is it is it more to know their legal rights, where to find your package? What are you getting questioned a lot on? where can I get your package? Everybody's like, oh, you're a hero. You're an angel. You, you've given me hope. I was so desperate and I had given up on mankind, but you've given me hope. Thank you so much. So we get all of that first. And then it's, oh, and by the way, can you give us your package? You did put out your phone number. So I hope it's okay that I texted you. Are you the right Jody? I think you're the right Jody. Um, so that seems to be the commonality of all the messages right across the board. And then I get to hear some of their stories. Um, I had one lady call me and I actually answered the phone and she was in hysterics because her ex-husband had taken her to court to have their three children vaccinated. She has a 12 year old, a 13 year old and a 16 year old, which according to our government can give consent on their own accord. Well, none of the three children want it. The dad is vaccinated, he wants him to be. She's not vaccinated. The kids don't want to be vaccinated. A judge in the family law courts ordered her to take those kids and have them vaccinated before the end of October. So if you can imagine, not only did the judge strip those children of the right to give consent over their own bodies, but he took away the mother's right to give consent over those children. And he has ordered them, as far as I'm concerned, to their death or to their harm. So I spent an hour on the phone with her going over the package going over what she needed. I told her to contest the judge's order. Um, I told her she needed a new lawyer, um, but I, I gave her, you know, I said, go to Pfizer's website, print off that it's still an experiment. Then take in with you the Nuremberg Code, take in with you can, the Canadian Bill of Rights, take in with you the, uh, the Ontario Healthcare Consent Act, take in with you the Freedom of Information and uh, First, personal privacy act take all of that in with you and then print off the VAERS report so they can see this is not safe and take in the criminal code and let the judge know that he has put on notice if he continues to order that her children now be put in harm's way that he will be charged under the criminal code for assault because that's what he's doing to these children assaulting and torturing them especially because the government has given 12 to 15 year olds the ability to give their own consent on this vaccine. And all three of her children have said no. So 
that's that's what's going on in the world today. But my answer to everybody is once I've given a little bit of something, and sometimes I, I just can't because my phone, literally, I'm answering 10 and I've got eight more requests coming in. So I've now copy, I have a copy and paste message that I just send out just just so that people get the get the package. Um, but and in that message, it says go to our gameoncanada.org website to get it. Because as I said, at the very beginning, I was sending the packages out, but it's so big, it was taking a half hour to send one email out. So we figured out a way to put it on our Game on Canada website, which was actually a kids initiative of Rise Up Durham's. Um, so now it's become a kid initiative website, but it's also become a Know Your Rights website as well. So the package can be found on gameoncanada.org under the Your Rights tab. And it, there's like, I don't know, 14 different documents under there. They all form the legal package. We also have a resource tab there. And the resource tab has a bunch of other things, such as, you know, signs for businesses that they can put up. Um, no trespassing signs you can put up on your house. And then it's got um, information to other websites that have really amazing information on it. And I did a four hour Zoom conference um, talking about the rights, talking about the laws, and then doing a question and answer period. So that video is now up on the website. So if anybody gets the package and they really don't know where to start, I say, watch the video. Watch the video, then learn the rights. Do not try and use the package without reading it because you're going to fumble and you're not gonna be confident in your square and you're not gonna feel empowered. And that's when they will, um, the authorities or whoever pulls you over, that's when they will win. And that's when they'll throw you in the back of their cruiser. I know so many people who have been thrown in the back of the cruiser, driven down the street and dropped off down the street at a park with a $50 ticket, but they still had to go through all of that fear and embarrassment and shame of being put in, in handcuffs in front of friends, family, and children um, for a $50 ticket. And a $50 ticket that at the end of the day, they never should have gotten. So, yeah. Uh, honestly, your your story is, uh, is so empowering. I, I really, I just, I can't, uh, um, I can't just even to say like, thank you enough for, for um, not even that you went out your way to do it like that, but just uh, the fact that it went viral and that it's encouraged so many people to stand up is just, is so empowering. I, it almost brings me to tears, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. Watching that video was just like, Oh my God, it was so good to see it actually in motion. It's one thing to have a package. It's one thing to see it, you know, on a website or hear about it, but like to actually see it in motion was, uh, is fantastic. And so I just wanted to, um, just to go into a little bit more detail about um, the Game On initiative. Um, I really want to, um, if you, we could go into more detail about what that was, how it started, what it's about. Um, and yeah, if you don't mind just going into a bit more, a bit more on that. Sure. So the Game On initiative started out, um, Rise Up Durham is a, is a freedom fighting group in the Durham region um, that obviously disagree with all the mandates, the lockdowns, the isolation of our children and what have you. And they've been holding rallies every Saturday in Whitby. We've been holding music fests. We've been doing picnics in the park. Um, and one of our picnics in the park actually went viral as well. Um, you know, when they shut down all the parks and the kids were no longer allowed to play in the park and they had caution tape over everything, um, our, our founder of Rise Up Durham, uh, Dermot Pomeroy, had decided that he'd had enough of his children being isolated and not being allowed to play with other kids. And the park was right across the road from his house. And he had to look at this caution taped off park every single day. And he had a seven year old daughter who wasn't allowed to go and play at it. So he just said, that's enough. We're gonna have a big park play date. We're gonna invite all the neighbors and everybody from the Rise Up Durham group and we're gonna do this. So we did, there was about a hundred people that showed up with their kids and we did a potluck barbecue in the park and bylaw came flying in in their cruisers, you know, on their megaphone saying, everybody get out of the park, get out of the park. You need to vacate. There's a stay at home order in place. And Dermot just turned up the music and said, yeah, I don't think so. We're playing and this is what we're doing. And then the police came, the police did not ticket us. Um, they were actually very cool. They said, everybody's got to move their cars or we're going to ticket you for parking. But other than that, we're going to leave you alone. The bylaw stayed and watched us for the whole three hours or four hours that we were there. But because of that video, everybody saw that video. 
uh, Take Action Canada saw that video and went, wow, this is a grassroots movement that is actually doing something. So they reached out to Dermot and said, hey, we want to support you and make your movement grow bigger so that maybe across the world, everybody will do this and start uh, fighting back in a peaceful, united way. So they ended up uh, throwing their heads together and they came up with GameOnCanada.org, the website. And it became an initiative where anybody and everybody was encouraged to hold family type peaceful protests, um, picnics in the park, have game days, have music fests, have information sessions and advertise it on our website so that anybody could just go to this website, see what was going on for kids and then go. Right. It was a one stop shop for everybody to know what was going on. And so that's how Game on Canada came about. And then summertime came and the government kind of loosened all of the, the handcuffs on us and and life sort of got back to living. And then we come into the end of August, beginning of September, and the government comes out with these mandates that all of our kids now have to be vaccinated in order to play sports. So game on Canada, <laughs> rise up Durham went, uh-uh, I don't think so. Um, Take Action Canada reached out to us and said, hey, we've got some people who want to invest more money into the grassroots movement. We want your group to pitch them ideas because we really love what your group has been doing. So we we um, got out of that call at the same time uh, Dermot had seen a post about the Scotiabank Arena only allowing 9,800 people to come see the uh, Maple Leafs play um, and that you had to be double vaccinated in order to go. Well, that set me off. It set him off. And then I said, that's it. We need to have a street hockey protest right outside the arena. And that's what we need to do. Maybe then we'll catch somebody's attention. We need to have our kids outside playing hockey in front of the in front of the NHLers as they're inside playing, just so everybody can see how unfair this is. And uh, he kind of laughed at me and then he went, wait a minute, that's a great idea. So from fruition to now, we have put this big, big shinny night in Canada event together in literally two and a half, three weeks. Um, we have over 120 kids already signed up to play next Wednesday, the Leafs home opener against the Montreal Canadiens. Um, so they're gonna be dueling it out inside while our kids are dueling it out outside in the street. We're gonna have basketballs there or basketball nets. So those who don't play hockey, there's basketball for them to play. We've already confirmed three former NHL uh, players that are going to come to our event. One of them is a Stanley Cup champion from 2007-2008 series. Uh, Dr. Byron Bridal is going to come and have a speech. The Canadian frontline nurses are going to be there and, and give a speech. Police on guard for thee are going to be there. They're going to be giving a speech. Uh, Dr. Imad Gurgis is going to emcee the event for us. We have some um, politicians that are going to unite together, all from different parties, going to unite together on the stage together with a message. We have a couple of video messages, I believe, coming in from some NHL players as well. Um, we're going to have music. We're, we have this big LCD screen. We've got a 10,000 watt stereo system that we've rented. We've got lights and scaffolding. We've got porta potties coming. Um, we've got loot bags for the kids. It's going to be an incredible, incredible event if everything goes as planned and we're hoping everything goes as planned but we've been advertising it hardcore we've been on a lot of uh um shows that are our viral shows the uh, kevin j johnson show odessa orlowitz i'm on amanda volmer tomorrow night we've been on amanda forbes we were on the robert morningstar show which it broadcasts in bc florida and new york city and the other day it they broadcast it in chicago um we're going to try and live stream all of the kids playing and we've got some messages from kids as well. Um, we do have um, a gentleman, a, a uh, I'm going to call him a gentleman, he's 16, I believe, who went and got the vaccine so that he could travel with his parents and he has suffered major harm to his health by getting this vaccine. Um, he's going to tell his story for us to share that information. But at the end of the day, it's a peaceful, family-friendly day to make people aware of the discrimination that's happening against our children and against our children's health, and that it's not right. It is not right. It's not right. It is not right. These kids should not be punished 
because they don't want to participate in an experiment. They should not be punished because their parents don't want them to participate in an experiment that has no long-term effects yet recorded. There's a whole slew of short-term effects um, that have been recorded. We know they've been underreported, and we don't think our kids should be guinea pigs for the pharmaceutical companies, and nor should they miss out on life for these pharmaceutical companies. It's not right to force them into an experiment to be able to go to school, to be able to play hockey, to be able to hang out with their friends, to be able to have birthday parties, to be able to have proms, um, graduations. It's not right. So this is one way that we are trying to bring it to the mainstream media and to the other side of the narrative that thinks it's okay to discriminate and segregate people. We, we've come so far in the discrimination and racist uh, world that we used to live in only to now go, you know, 50, 50 years backwards. And I don't understand how people can sit there and cheer that on and think it's okay and to hurt these children because, because they want to be healthy, because all they want to do is live life in a world where they don't have to be experimented on. It's not right. So gameoncanada.org. You can go over there. You can sign up to be a volunteer. We need about 100 volunteers. We've got, I think, 42 signed up so far. You can sign your kids up, ages 5 to 17, to play hockey and basketball. Or you can just come down and support the event. The event is costing us about $20,000 to put on. And normally, we do all of our events out of our own pockets. We don't ask for donations. We don't ask for money. And everything is always free. This event is free as well. However, this time we are asking for donations because $20,000 is a lot of money to come up with. So there is a place to donate on our website um, and every little bit helps. Well, that's incredible. Uh, you're going big or go home with that one, eh? So yeah, that, that'll be really interesting to, to see that unravel. And what a great event that will be for the kids. Uh, a lot of kids need to get out there and start doing so stuff. And it's like you're saying, um, this whole segregation is, is starting to go way too far. Uh, even the people that have wound up getting the vaccines are starting to realize just kind of where they're at and what's going on because um, they're starting to talk about the third booster shot. And and I've pointed out to, to individuals as well that have gotten the vaccine and they think it's going to go back to normal and they believe that these passes are going to get rid of the mask and open everything up. But I, I remind them, you know, you, you got the two shots, whether you have one or two, and then we've watched Trudeau secure 30 million doses for 22, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, plus your two doses. You know, you're, you're at six shots now. So you think that in those two, uh, you're going to wind up going back to normal. Well, you're still doing all of these restrictions, but now they're, they're deciding to discriminate. And I found one of the biggest um, debates you'll have with anyone that is kind of on the other side of the fence, that they'll say, well, we've been into, you know, the vaccine or immunization records for a child right, to get into school and that kind of thing. But I'll, I'll tell them, you can still register your child in school with no vaccines. You can still go to McDonald's. You can still go to the gym. You can go to the civic centers. You can go and buy groceries. So this has, there's not even a comparable on that level where somebody's restricting you um, from service or access and it, it's literally, we've gotten out of this stage in humanity several times, you know? Uh, so now they're just kind of throwing us back into that state. But people are starting to realize it, especially with the, the talk of the third booster on the horizon. And then we're gonna get more and more people waking up from that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, cause you mentioned it before, um, all of us are, are involved with We Are All Essential um, and that's that's a pretty cool organization, I'd say. Uh, and we're always looking for new faces to join us to, you know, help stand in the fight. Whether you're another business, you don't know which way to turn or any of that. Uh, we offer Zoom meetings. Uh, we have a Telegram chat. We're always passing information back and forth. You get to talk to. We're all pretty active within the chat. 
Um, lately, I know I haven't been, and I know Jody hasn't been, because we've been just swamped with other things, and uh, that happens time to time for all of us. So, um, yeah, uh, the We Are All Essential also needs volunteers, and they also have Jody's package on that website as well. So, um, and how has that network, because this is one thing that we've expressed several times uh, through, through these shows, is how, how has We Are All Essential benefited you, yourself, Joe? Uh, I am a business owner. I own my own real estate company. And when I was going through my cancel culture stage back in January, February, March, um, we're all essential was, was other business owners that led, gave me support, made me feel like what I was doing was the right thing. Um, realistically, they empowered me with laws. They empowered me with compassion and empathy and support. Um, every, you know, every week they have two zoom meetings that you can participate in and seeing these other business owners that are going through the same things you are that are struggling with bylaw and struggling with clients and customers struggling with negativity coming at them and negative reviews just for doing the right and legal thing just for trying to provide for their family and, and, and trying to stay open when everybody else is so afraid and wants you to close, but they don't understand that if you close as a business, you're not just losing a paycheck. You've got double the amount of bills as every other household because you've got the bills for your business, but then you still have the bills of your regular home and people don't understand that. I was talking to a business owner in Coburg and he was talking to his neighbor and his neighbor's like, well, you, you have your own store. You've been in your in business forever. If you, if you can't shut down for a few months, then you're not obviously not running your business right. And the guy said to him, do you understand that you might be able to take a couple of months off of your work and still be able to pay your mortgage and put food on the table and pay your utility bills? But do you understand I have the same bills that you have, but I also have lease payments, I have inventory payments, I have to pay the gas and I have to pay the hydro, but I'm not allowed to go in that store. So where is the money coming from to pay not only my household's bills and put food on the table for my children, but where does the money come from to pay all the bills over there? Because it costs me about $80,000 for one month or two months to run that store. And I've got inventory sitting there that I can't do anything with. And if you're a restaurant, it's even worse because you've got inventory that's now rotting that you cannot use again. And people don't understand that just because you own a business doesn't mean you have millions of dollars sitting in your bank account. You still have bills coming out of you and it's two to three times the amount of bills coming out of you as a normal household. So it's not so easy just to go on serve and shut your doors. You still have to provide for your family. You still have to provide for your business. And if you can't provide for your business, you no longer have a job. Your employees no longer have jobs. So now you're taking on the extra stress and emotional pain of your employees and having to put people out of work, which means you now take on the toll of them not being able to feed their family and cover their bills and possibly becoming homeless as well. So there's a lot on business owners that people don't take, uh, th they don't think about, they take for granted that there's all this extra pressure. So in the We Are All Essential, we support each other. And when we're having rough days, we're all there to say, hey, it's okay, I got your back. You're doing good, you're, you're doing awesome. When the bylaw comes knocking on the door, we've got an SOS chat and they just plug into it quickly. And within seconds, they've got several other business owners jumping in saying, hey, we got you girl. You know, This is what you're gonna say, this is what you're gonna do. Don't open your door, don't do this, don't do that. We've got you. Get your phone out, remember, record, remember your script. And, and it just takes that extra little bit of pressure off knowing there's somebody else that understands what you're going through and has your back. And in those moments of high stress, when the bylaw and the police are knocking at your door, or you've got an angry person at your door that's not even your customer, but they're just angry that you're, that you're working at your door, that there's a whole crew of people behind you 
that are supporting you. Like I, I've never been involved in a group that has such a supportive and empathetic and compassionate component to it, such as we are all essential. And on top of that, they're always learning. They're always trying to teach us stuff and they're always staying on top of the law and trying to stay ahead of the law. And I, I know Jamie, you were involved in an initiative to try and figure out how we could help restaurants with their liquor licenses, because that's what they're all being threatened with right now. I was at a meeting yesterday up in Hamilton and the restaurant owner, she she's very public. We do not discriminate, everyone is welcome. She had MTO at her door uh, two days ago. She had the liquor inspector at her door the day before. And then she had the health inspector there when we were there. And she said, why on earth is MTO at my door? What did they have to do with restaurants? But they're there intimidating her and trying to scare her into shutting her door. And I will give you this tip, Jamie, because I'm, I was listening and she was talking to the liquor license guy and she obviously knows her liquor license act inside and out because she said to him, you want me to ask people for their vaccination status, their health cards, their, their health status. And yet in the liquor control board act that, that I have to follow in order to keep my liquor license, it specifically says in there, I'm not allowed to ask for health cards, to see health cards, or to ask about somebody's health records. So do you want me to follow the mandate, which is not law, or do you want me to follow the act that is law? Which one do you want me to follow? You might want to take that back to your supervisor and ask them. And that poor bylaw didn't have a response, or the, not bylaw, the liquor license inspector didn't have an answer because she was right. In that act, it says you cannot ask for their health card or health information right there in the act. And yet they're saying, hey, we're going to pull your license if you don't have the vaccine passport uh, app. She's like, that's a mandate. Mandate's not law. So which one do you want me to follow? The law that says I can't or the mandate that says you want me to? So I thought, wow, that's amazing. I need to tell Jamie when I see him next because I know he was working on the liquor license for restaurants. So yeah. that might be an angle. Yeah, that will be for this one. Um, the, the biggest trick with it before was in the, the liquor license, it, it says that you have to follow all the laws, but the, the bylaws prior to the, the passport were unlawful and they broke a bunch of laws as well so trying to get the liquor board to see where the laws were broken they just say no no this was put through so it was a little more difficult um and then you need somebody to really know what what their rules are so i'm i know somebody that had their liquor license pulled so i'm waiting to get all the infractions so that this way we can kind of scrutinize it and then go back into that because there's no violation on the liquor license so it, it shouldn't be pulled anyway um, but yes, with, with the vaccine uh, passports as well, with a lot of businesses, they don't realize that um, the government has put you into a really uh, bad spot. You're in a rock and a hard place because they're threatening you, I believe it's like up to a $10 million fine, a year in prison, if you don't look for the passport. And then the actual laws that have been around for decades for infringing on somebody's medical um, information, which you're breaking an actual law that's been around for decades, uh, you're, you're discriminating. So as soon as you say, do you have a vaccine passport? Discrimination, because you're lining it up. If they say yes, you've discriminated against somebody that is not. If they say no, then you tell them they can't come in. So either way, you're discriminating. And in the human rights that's a hundred thousand dollar fine and you can uh, suffer a lot of consequences of that so basically if you break the laws that have been around for decades you're looking at a million dollar and up to a year in prison these new shifty weird whatever you want to call them i don't even want, i'm not going to call it a law or anything regulation or whatever the hell they are but these are never been contested so Take your fine, go to court, and beat them there because these aren't going to hold up. You can you can prove to them how many things are actually infringing upon. Plus, on top of that, none of us are, are medical practitioners or doctors. 
the only one that has the right to look at your medical history is your doctor or the referral of a doctor as a specialist or in an emergency when you're in the hospital. So that's it. Everybody else is not entitled. And I'm pretty sure on some of the the vaccine uh, vaccination cards and the passports, it says, do not show this information to anyone <laughs> except for your doctor. <laughs> so this is so ridiculous. So basically the government has set up um, all, all these businesses literally to go bankrupt because what's going to start to happen is your patrons are going to start to sue you. And once they start to sue you, you're going to go bankrupt. If you know, close because the government says you're going to go bankrupt. So any way you go, you're kind of screwed. So you might as well do the right thing and just drop everything and just carry on. Um, and yeah, that is a good angle because the, the liquor, the liquor license is basically, yes, I can't do that. You've already told me and here's where you showed me. And you see, that's what I'm going to try and do with uh, the regulations for during the lockdown, because there's nothing in there that actually infringes the liquor license. Now, the best way to get around the liquor license is all the restaurants just open. They're not going to take all your liquor licenses away. The LCBO is going to go through the roof. Okay, so why do you think restaurants are able to uh, all of a sudden send liquor and takeout? Okay, so you have to be 19 to buy a beer in the restaurant, but I can give it to Skip the Dishes, and they take it to the 12-year-old at home that ordered, right? Okay, so is that, you know, Skip the Dishes guy IDing people at the door? I don't think so, right? So, I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. So, uh, again, and also going back to uh, some of the comments that you were saying there earlier, Jody, was... Uh, you know, when, you, when you're explaining to somebody how you have double the bills, I found one of the easiest ways to kind of explain it without getting too in depth. I'll just say to people, you know, if I close my business, okay, so I get where you're coming from. But what you're not realizing is that's not just my monthly income. Okay, so picture losing your monthly income. Now picture somebody trying to take all of your investments all at the same time. Right. So what, what would you do? And your pension, because this is our retirement fund. Our business is our retirement fund. So could you imagine somebody coming in, taking your monthly income, taking all your investments and your retirement fund? What would you do? Would you be like, OK, no problem. You can have it. Not a chance. Right. So that's that's one way I kind of uh, tell people and then they get it you'll see them sitting and, and pondering they're like oh okay that makes a lot of sense now so also i just wanted to mention uh, to everybody that's watching we're gonna wind up in the uh, description of this video we're gonna wind up having all of the links uh, that jody was talking about uh, we are essential game on um every everything we've been talking about so that you'll have access to it. so And would either one of you ladies want to wrap that up? I forgot to mention when the event was. So Wednesday, October 13th at the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto at Bremner Boulevard. It's at the corner of York Street and Bremner. Four o'clock, the festivities are going to start. The volunteers are needed down there for two-ish. Um, bring your kids, bring your volunteers, bring your laughter, bring your positive energy because it's a positive energy event. And it's all inclusive, no discrimination, no segregation, bring your game, let's the, let the kids play. That's, that's our motto, let the kids play and that's what it's gonna be. So October 13th, it's a Wednesday, four o'clock, Bremner Boulevard, Scotiabank Arena, Toronto, Ontario, let the kids play. And I do not consent. Who would wanna go see the game? I wanna hang out outside, this sounds amazing. Jody, thank you so much for being a beacon of light. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate that. Of course, that was awesome, Jody. I, I love your full explanation of everything. That was that was fantastic. Um, thank you for taking the time to go through everything. And that that was like 
I, honestly, I, I could listen to you for hours. I swear to God. Um, I, I look forward to, um, I've gone through your package a little bit, but I'm going to go, go into full detail and, and kind of go through that. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to Chris's, um, um, uh, night, um, on Thursday so I can get kind of some more information there just to make sure that I'm fully informed. I, I help with moderating the SOS chat. So I need to make sure that, uh, again, like what you said, that we're constantly keeping up on education. So I need to make sure that, um, through everything, through this content, constantly changing environment that uh i'm i'm really i'm kept up to date on that and then i can we can provide the support that people are looking towards for for this group for we all essential um so thank you for your time your kind words and and your motivation and your energy that's, that's fantastic i gave you goosebumps a bunch of times so this is great uh loved having you on that was fantastic everybody You're muted. You're Sorry, muted. Sorry. You repeat, that. repeat that. I said, and Kimberly, everybody loves your shirt. Super spreader of truth, love, and health. Everybody, everywhere I go, everybody loves it. I gave my dad one, and he gets so many good compliments. At first, he was like, I'm not wearing that. And I'm like, just wear it. You're going to a rally, just wear it. Now I can't get it off of him because so many women approach him going, oh, I love your shirt. <laughs> That's it. That's the one. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for taking the initiative to get those out. They're awesome. Thank you. And I would just like to cap it off with uh, thank you for being here, Jody. You're an incredible powerhouse. Uh, you've given a, a, a nice, bright, shining light for others to follow. And not just to follow, um, you've given them a direction with that package, uh, a wealth of knowledge um i got the package from you right at the beginning i i wound up getting it in a zip file and i was able to get it out very quickly to a bunch of people so i, I tried to get it out as quickly as i could for you as well and told people you need to go through it read it learn your rights and that's what this whole conversation is about uh we, we encourage everyone and thank you for staying for the conversation because you're going to leave empowered the more knowledge you know the more rights you have the better you can stand, and then we give you a bunch of resources, learn, 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 and then you can practice. So to that, everyone have a great night, and we'll see you next time.